thousands of years, the ancient path between Niagara and Detroit forded the Grand River at about this spot. That path and this ford saw the movements of troops, the flight of refugees, and the coming of the Kentucky Cavalry. Of course, there wasn't any Brantford here in 1812, just a couple of squatters, but a mile down the river was the Mohawk Chapel and Brantstown, the Mohawk Village. Everybody knew the war was coming, but in June of 1812, the United States of America finally formally declared war on Great Britain. General Hull in Detroit invaded Upper Canada two or three weeks later. General Brock in York assembled his men and marched overland, stopping at the Mohawk Village to meet with the Six Nations. Brock needed our participation and our support if they were to win. They took very few warriors for us to affect what many, many soldiers and militia would ever, would ever be able to undertake. So he made a special excursion to gain our support. Brock left for Port Dover and ultimately Detroit with 50 native warriors. The most exciting thing that happened during the War of 1812 in this area was in the fall of 1814. Colonel MacArthur brought 750 Kentucky Cavalry, one of the first, one of the only cavalry actions during the War of 1812, across the Detroit River, along the Thames, down the Burford Plains, and was stopped at about this point on the Grand River by a collection of local militia and Six Nations warriors. MacArthur turned around at this point, claiming that the river was too high. He then rode off through Mount Pleasant and down to the mill in Oakland. General MacArthur and his Kentucky Raiders were stopped by the local militia at this spot, Malcolm's Mill. Outnumbered and outmaneuvered, the locals were driven from the field, giving the skirmish the local nickname of the foot races. And although this particular engagement is often left out of popular accounts of the War of 1812, it's really significant. This is the last battle on Canadian soil against an invading foreign power. But there are other stories, tales of hidden casks of gold and forgotten burials. The 200th anniversary of the War of 1812 gives us all an opportunity to discover and commemorate our early history. What happens in, in 2015? What, what's what's going to happen in 2020? What's that legacy look like? We would like to leave a legacy of acknowledgement through respect because once we've gained that respect and the acknowledgement that we were a significant player and that we were an equal in this particular battle, perhaps we can start on that path. I think it's an opportunity to show uh, our own communities, plural, how well we work together uh, as different nations and cultures. And we're gonna get a, a stronger sense of our own pride and identity here. This upcoming uh, bicentennial for the War of 1812, I believe it's very, very important. I think it'll have a great impact on the military museum itself. We have one of the largest collections of 1812 artifacts uh, in this area, ranging from weapons to uniforms to things that the soldier would have carried with him, some finds that were found on battlefields locally here. We do have some plans, and uh, I think they're going to be very uh, acceptable by the public. It's going to be some really nice things happen. Well, right now we're in the Paris branch at the County of Brant Public Library. One of the things that we've done this year that we're really excited about is the um, digital collection we've created that allows people um, to have access to some of the historical collections in the community that they weren't able to access before. So we've created this website that allows them to go online anytime they want and they can find all that historical information. And now, of course, going into the um, commemorative period for 1812, we're looking towards that event. And we're hoping to partner with uh, the museums and the community and get their um, materials that are usually only accessible through the museum directly up uh, online so that people everywhere can access them. 
I think there's a real opportunity for the arts community to get involved in things. And the Brantford Arts Block challenges the local artists to come forward with interesting and exciting ideas and, and new projects and new ways of doing things. I think far too often the arts community can be um, a little more laid back and, and not take advantage of opportunities like this. Brantford is going through a, a sort of renaissance of its own as of late, so I think that this is a perfect opportunity to maybe celebrate that and, and take it to the next level. The commemoration of the War of 1812, the Bicentennial, is going to be a large national celebration. There are many people on the American side, for instance, who call the War of 1812 the Second War of Independence. On the Canadian side, it really established uh, the path towards Confederation. It established Ontario's existence at that time and Southern Ontario's existence. And it established the Niagara frontier as the border. There are many uh, communities within Ontario that are well on their way in promoting and developing programs and products uh, to commemorate the War of 1812. So it's really important for our community to certainly participate and continue that story. It could be a restaurant creating a new menu, a museum offering an exhibit, or art displays, uh, anything, a storytelling of any kind. Uh, it's, there's really so much that they can do and and uh, certainly tourism is here to offer support. There are stories that haven't been told, stories at kind of ground level um, in communities like Brantford, and so I think that this is one of the hopes that we will uh, delve into some of those stories and maybe add a little bit more color, a little more depth to the, to the story that we have of 1812. Join us. Visit grandriver1812.ca to learn more.